In this video, I'm going to show you what is the difference between the standard VLAN and extended VLAN and mainly focus on the extended VLAN. I'm going to show you everything using a Cisco Packer Tracer. So what we are going to look at in the Cisco Packer Tracer is what is standard VLAN, what is extended VLAN, when we need extended VLAN, how to create standard and extended VLAN, and what are the guidelines you need to follow when creating extended VLAN. So let's get to the packet tracer. I'm going to use a simple layer to switch to explain all these concepts to you. Let's go into the CLI mode, go into the privilege mode by typing in enable and issue a command show VLAN. You will see a bunch of VLANs, VLAN 1 and VLAN 1002 to 1005. These are called default VLANs. All your port will be in VLAN 1. Since these are default VLAN and come with the switch, you cannot change the name of these VLANs or you cannot delete them. Just out of curiosity, just try to change the name or delete one of this VLAN and see what message we are getting. Conf T VLAN 1 name sales. Default VLAN 1 may not have its name changed. Let's try to do the same thing to VLAN 1003, say, example, and try to give a name as sales. Same thing. Default VLAN 1003 may not have its name changed. Exit and try to delete VLAN 1. No VLAN 1. VLAN 1 may not be deleted. Try to do the same thing to 1000, say for example, 1004, same message. So you cannot change the name or you cannot delete these default VLANs. In actual production, we don't use VLAN 1 or VLAN 1002 to 1004. Basically, these are legacy VLANs. We never use them in a modern network but we try to avoid using VLAN 1 because you have a security risk by using default VLAN 1. Because everybody know there's a VLAN called default VLAN and if you leave ports in default VLANs, what will happen is they try to bring in a device and they can get into your network. So we normally shut down default VLAN 1. So nobody can have access to VLAN 1. So let's create some VLANs here. First, we are going to create standard VLAN. So standard VLAN range from VLAN 1 to 1005. Since you cannot change the name or delete these five VLANs, you are left with 1000 VLAN range from VLAN 2 to 1001. If you are a small to medium size organization or business, these 1000 VLANs are plenty for you to work with. Let's create some standard VLANs here and see what are the methods you can use to create standard VLANs. VLAN 100, name sales. Let's create another VLAN 200, name marketing. Say for example, if you want to create a range of VLANs, you can do that. Issue a command VLAN. It show you, you can create VLAN in this range. 1 to 4094 and ISL VLANs IDs are 1 to 1005. You might wonder what is the ISL VLAN. ISL VLAN is called standard VLAN. That's another name for standard VLAN. I'm going to create a range here. VLAN 120 to 150 invalid input detected. You know the packet tracer IO is kind of limited, but you can use this command in a real switch. Let me bring in a real switch environment here. This I am using a Cisco modeling lab. Cisco modeling lab, you can get kind of real IOS, real switch environment. VLAN 100 to 200. You see, it allows you to create a range of VLANs. But if you want to name them, you have to name them individually because you cannot give a same name to all the VLANs. Let's exit out and find out 
whether it has really created all these VLAN and show VLAN and you can see all these VLANs have been created but you see there are no names for these VLANs if you want to give a name I'm going to use VLAN brief so you can get some clutter out of that come with the show VLAN command. You can see it named the VLANs, rest of them are unnamed. So this is how you deal with the standard VLANs. So let's try to create an extended VLAN in the packet tracer. VLAN say 4000. It says VLAN create fail. Fail to create VLAN 4000 extended VLANs not allowed in current VTP mode. So let's find out what VTP mode we are in. Show VTP status. It says we are in server mode. So what VTP does is it allows you to create VLAN and sync VLAN with all your switches in your environment. So what VTP does is it allows you to maintain a VTP database. Say for example, let's create a VTP domain, VTP domain, say Apple. So now you have created a VTP domain. It says changing VTP domain name from null to Apple. Now let's look at show VTP status. Now your domain changed from none to Apple, and you still have this switch as a VTP server. So VTP server allows you to create VLANs. But if you are in a client mode, VTP client mode, you cannot create VLAN. You only can sync VLAN with a VTP server. So what that means is all the VLANs in the VTP server will be synchronized to all of your VTP client switches. So you have to maintain one or two VTP servers. Say for example, if you are going to create a VLAN called accounting, you only have to create that in the VTP server switch. That VLAN will be propagated to all your VTP client switches instantly. Say for example, if you have 100 VTP client switches, you do not have to go into each switch and create accounting VLAN. Only create in VTP server and that will be synchronized to all of your switches. But if you are in a VTP client mode, you cannot create any VLAN. So let's try that VTP mode client and you will still keep the VTP domain. Show VTP status. You see, now you are in client. So now try to create a VLAN, conf t, VLAN 250, VTP VLAN configuration not allowed when device is in client mode. So you cannot create a VLAN when it is in a client mode. So this is how VTP works. So if you are creating extended VLAN, you cannot have your switch in a client mode or in a server mode you need to be in a transparent mode. Transparent switches allow you to create any amount of VLAN. It also passes the VTP messages, but it does not process the VTP messages. That means it doesn't sync any VLAN from your VTP servers. If you want to understand how VTP works and how VTP database sync all these VLANs, I will link a video in my description. I did that lab in a real Cisco switch environment, I would recommend you to watch that video. So now we change this switch to VTP transparent mode, VTP mode transparent, setting device to VTP transparent mode. Let's look at the show VTP status. You see, you still keeping the domain name. So you can have a transparent switch in your VTP domain, but it will not process any VTP messages from your VTP server. That means it will not sync the database with your VTP server, but it will pass that message to other switches 
if it has to go through this switch. So now let's create an extended VLAN here. Conf T VLAN 4000 name ext1 show vlan and now you can see vlan 4000 so extended vlan start from vlan 1006 to 4096 so if you are a very large organization or an isp provider you may want to use extended vlans if you have any question, put down in the comment section. I will try to answer those questions as soon as possible. That's all for this video. I will see you in another video.